Thank God the room is back. You know what? I think we'll cue some music too. So most of you are probably tired of the long, boring fusion videos because I'm not very good at fusion and all the stuff I do takes a lot of time. Some of you are really interested, so thanks for that and that's cool, but I think it's best we stop doing the long, boring fusion videos. So today, and I have the cylinder is finished or the basic shape of the cylinder there's a few tweaks <clears throat> there's a few tweaks here and there there i will have to do or i want to do and i'm not sure about yet but most of it are um, set in stone so yeah that's it it's uh, done i'll just show you how i did it or i'll show you what i did and <laughs> just explain a little bit and I won't do uh, because if I were to take you along for this ride That would have meant maybe five three hour videos and nobody has time for five three hour videos Of me talking about boring stuff and doing stuff in a convoluted and complicated uh, way Anyways to fusion <laughs> and I'll show you the cylinder in fusion. So here's the finished product with water jacket and all I'm quite <coughs> I'm quite pleased with it there's uh, a couple of things I'm not so happy with uh, let's show you here it's the water the coolant regime so as I have it now there's uh, coolant coming in from behind here and it's going over the transfers and then uh, up in front at the duct here, around and up over the exhaust duct, then up around the chain, up, <laughs> up around the cylinder and through these slots up over the head or the insert. I've made an uh, insert here. This, that's not the finished insert, just something I mocked up to, to show you how it would look. So it goes uh, around the cylinder, up through the, these uh, slots, and over the um, insert here. And notice the insert is thinner in the squish band because I want the squish band to be cooled more than the rest of this, uh, the rest of the combustion chamber. That's the theory, anyway. So uh, yeah, I'll uh, show you the. So the the thing I'm not so pleased about is that there's too much volume inside here and I really would want to cool the inside of the transfers too like I've talked about the thing is I although it's easy to print it not bad at all actually uh, when I put it at an angle it was actually possible to print without any internal supports just support to keep it at an angle I think it was like this so the Ender Tree is a really great printer, actually, in my opinion, because it's able to print not 45 degrees overhangs, like is the rule. Uh, it's actually able to print maybe 95 degrees overhangs without much trouble. So a great printer with the right settings. And the right settings are the settings that uh, basically are stuck for the printer or came with the printer, it seems. But anyways. So I would really like to have some small channels going uh, through the transfers and also I would want a more convoluted path and less volume and stuff but I fear it will be extremely difficult to cast because the mold will crack if there's tiny passages everywhere. So we'll try like this first and see how it works. If the cooling is absolutely trash we will have to try a better, um, better regime. That's that. Uh, I'll show you the transfers. Let's see here. Let's remove the head insert. Transfers. So here are the transfers. People have asked me to explain a bit more about uh, why I've chosen to have the transfers uh, like they are. So first of all, the angles are pretty much the same angles that are run in every modern high-performance two-stroke. It's basically based on uh, Jan Thiel's work on the Aprilia RSA and what all of those guys uh, <coughs> managed by him 
came up with working best. So that's the scavenging uh, setup we are going for here. I have changed a tiny, tiny uh, thing. Or actually, these transfers are based off my, uh, of the Yama M50 cylinder I have been using up until now. But they're the same because this is a small copy of the RSA, in uh, basically, more or less. What I've done is I have, as my uh, ducts here, my B ducts are so wide, and the reason they are so wide it is because I want to keep the duct from bending in more than one plane. So as you can see here, it's only bending in this plane. There is no bend here, so it's, that's, it's a straight path from the bottom and up to the top into the cylinder. And this is to keep the transfer flow or to try to make the transfer flow flow in this direction as much, much as possible. Flow in the direction I want it to flow. Now, as there, uh, it's common to have this port much narrower down here, and then have the port kind of scoop out here. So go up here and then scoop, scoop around like this. Let's see if I can draw, no. Go up here and then scoop around like this. So probably my transfers have a little bit more direction, directional flow towards the exhaust port. And to combat this more towards exhaust port behavior, my A transfers are pulled closer towards the this, this edge of the bore. And they are angled a little bit more towards the rear here. To give a little bit more push towards the rear on the column, on the rising uh, transfer gas column. So that's basically the, um, the theory here. Some people have uh, advised to go with skinnier ducts. Some people have advised to keep the fat ducts. As I said last time, Fritz over Mars said keep the ducts and Fritz over Mars is a person you should trust when it comes to two strokes. And I, uh, as a... Uh, <laughs> As uh, ego as it might sound, I know it's not that word I should use, but uh, I agree because a fat duct will have lower velocity, but it will also have higher mass flow and maybe a better directional control because there's less velocity. This could also be the, uh, the opposite, bad, bad directional control because there is too low velocity, but let's say it's not that way. And also higher pressure in the gas columns because of the lower velocity. And therefore maybe it's easier or harder for the spent gases to penetrate the column. And have less mixing. Yeah, that's the transfers. Exhaust! Exhaust! And here you can see that thing too. I'll remove that for now. So the exhaust port is uh, sitting 3 millimeters from the transfer floors. And it's 100% uh, of bore, and it has a slight or a pretty big radius on the top edge here. Now, I'm not sure what to do with this top edge if I want to shape it differently, have a smaller radius or steeper radius. If I want to make uh, a step like a notch in the middle here to simulate a three port design, or if I want to do something completely different, and I think I am going to do. The completely different thing. So what I think I want to do is actually raise the floor and I said this in maybe the third third episode in this, uh, in this series. I think it was the third episode before this series started. Yeah you should <laughs> advise go back and watch all the episodes in this playlist because otherwise you won't hang on to or <laughs> you won't follow along what's going on here. But anyways, I I think I want to raise the floor to to the transfer roof and do not uh, I'm I'm not going to run a bevel or anything down here. Just raise the floor to transfer open, or maybe one millimeter below transfer open. And the reason is, and I'll have to show you on the paper here. So here's a statement. A three port exhaust, <laughs> a cylinder with a three port has higher power potential than a cylinder with a twin 
exhaust port. That's the statement. If that statement is true, which I think it is, then there has to be a reason uh, why a three port design is better than a two port design or a twin port. And I think the reason is because there's better flow in the two auxiliary ports because the ducts are narrower than there is in uh, and the big exhaust port in the middle than there is in the two large exhaust ports with corresponding large ducts in a two port design during blowdown. So during the blowdown phase when the duct really is too large for the port I think a three port design with the smaller ducts for the small uh, auxiliary ports and the relatively smaller duct for the big main port is better than a twin port because a twin port has to have much larger duct volume compared to the limited port area in the blowdown phase. So I think that's the reason why. So what I think will be best is just to raise the floor and have this duct as narrow as possible. I think that's actually better and also this will gain me some uh, some short circuiting control. Maybe I can reduce short circuiting, not just maybe, it will reduce short circuiting of uh, uh, transfers into the exhaust, transfer flow into the exhaust because the transfers, all the transfers will sit below the exhaust port. It won't be here. So yeah, I think, uh, actually let's just do that. Let's see here. And now, now we will see the extreme amount of uh, sketches that has been made for this uh, for this model. Whoa, <laughs> that's a big mess. Let's turn off all this, and my computer is hanging here. Let's just turn off all this. Like so, and now crossing fingers will stop sketch and see what happens. And this will probably take a while. While we're waiting for uh, that stuff to take a while, if anything happens at all here, I it might just be uh, locked in trying to calculate all the changes. I first was going to go with a short 20 millimeter um, spigot outside the uh, cylinder here, connecting the uh, header to the cylinder. But after printing this and looking at it, it looks uh, wrong. So what I think I'm going to do is make this spigot much longer or actually make this a part of the header or make the spigot, spigot out of the header. Basically just squash the header to an oval shape and pull it maybe same length, so maybe 60 millimeters out. I have a drawing on the computer, just uh, you saw it uh, just recently, so just wait till the program is ready and I'll show you. So we're uh, experiencing 40 errors and 15 warnings here. That's a lot of errors and warnings. And now it's uh, hanging because uh, or due to the screen recorder. Okay, anyways, let's just leave this here and uh, let it work away. I think this is it for this video. I uh, there might be uh, the kiln might be sorted. I, uh, there's a guy uh, who might be sponsoring the elements and uh, a controller and stuff, so great stuff. It might be up and running soon. And uh, as soon as I have the kiln running and I have uh, acquired the, the investment powder I need for casting, we will try casting this cylinder. And the reason I haven't added material in the holes and on the faces and stuff is I want to cast the cylinder 
exactly like it is and then see where it's shrinking and where I have to add material, where I have to pull out material and stuff like that. So I'm printing the exact size I want and the errors from the printer and the casting will show up in the final result and then we'll uh, adjust in the CAD model. Okay, kind of a mess. We are experiencing progress and soon there will be actual hands-on <coughs> actual hands-on work on this channel again. Thanks for watching.